Greetings, everybody. This is Winnie Riggle, and welcome back to Direwolf 20's 1.16 mod pack. We're in episode 13, and today we're on an adventure looking for an ocean monument because we need Prismarine because I want to be able to make the dimensional cells from RF tools. So that'll be fun to get out of the base and do a little adventuring. Whoa, those islands. We just lucked out. I'm about to hit ashore, aren't I? Yep. Mm hmm. We are headed in a northwesterly direction over to an ocean monument I passed last time we were out adventuring. So as soon as we get there, I will bring you back. We should be coming up on it. There it is. I definitely want to set down a bed nearby because these are dangerous places. Oh, oh, there's a ship. That's kind of cool. Let's do that. We'll set up our temporary base here on our shipwreck. We might find some treasure while we're at it. There is, oh, and that's good. That puts us right at the front of the ocean monument, ready to conquer it. Our goal is to bring back a captured guardian and a captured elder guardian if we can, because I fancy farming some sponges. And I thought we'd conquer the monument while we're here. I come prepared. We have potions of water breathing, potions of strength. Uh, I also have golden apples as well as a ton of food. I made a quantum storage bag. Check this thing out. Look at all that space for collecting items. I also happen to bring a tank full of milk and a couple of buckets to help us with the whole mining fatigue problem. I'm going to sleep and we'll attack first thing in the morning. Here we go. Potion of water breathing. Night vision might might have been a thing. It'll be fine. It'll totally be fine. Hi, everybody. Ah, I can I get to you? Ah, thank you. Oh, y'all leave a mark. Okay. Let's go in the easy way. No mining fatigue yet. Oh, look who I found. Hi. Oh, wait. We need to capture you. I, I would like to capture you in this, please. Uh, maybe. Maybe. <laughs> Elder Guardian, instant. We're done here. That's all I needed. Really. Can we go? Just kidding. There's some mining fatigue. Really, we're just looking for the gold room and the other two guardians. Hi. You're no joke. Hard to kill. Hello. I'm looking for your big daddy bro. Mm, aha. Elder guardian number two. And I would like you to die, please. Yeah! Oh, there are a lot of y'all. You better run. Oh, hello! We found you! Another apple. Another bush of strength. You really live a mark. Aha! Three down! And our mob's captured. That actually didn't take as long as I thought it would. And we're out. Excuse me! Bye! Y'all have fun with that. Mm -hmm. Bye! One Minecraft day, one ocean monument, mostly conquered. Okay, what have we got? Uh, enough prismarine shard to make some of our recipes. Two sponges, which is not bad. Oh, Elder Guardian statue. Nice. That's too bad I didn't get an Elder Guardian. Oh, I can wear it. <laughs> That's the best ever. Okay, I think. That means we've had a successful adventure. Woohoo! Okay, I'm headed back to base. If anything exciting happens on the journey home, I'll bring you back. <laughs> and we're home. Back to base. That actually wasn't nearly as fraught with dangers as I thought it would be. Let me get my backpack unpacked and a few things organized and we will get to crafting and mob duplicating. Now that we have obtained a few prismarine shards from our ocean monument adventures, we have the tools we need to have all the power. 
or at least control of the power throughout our base. So let's take a look at the materials that I've collected. In my inventory, I have most of what we need to make two key things. One, the dimensional cell that I mentioned at the beginning of the episode. And this is a block that can store power. And if we make multiple blocks, they can be linked across our base and function as one large multi-dimensional structure. And I'll show you how that works. In order to improve these, you'll note that second part of the description is infusing bonus, reduced long distance power extraction costs and increased RF per tick output if we infuse it. So I also want to make a machine infuser. So we're gonna start with that. So the machine infuser is made of a dimensional shards, diamonds, a machine frame, which is just iron, gold nuggets, and blue dye. So we're going to need a couple of machine frames. So I'm gonna go ahead and make three of those. Now we'll make a machine infuser. Ta-da! Now we're gonna make a couple of dimensional cells. The recipe is actually quite simple. Diamonds, the prismarine shards were the hardest part, and then the blocks of redstone. So let's make two of those. The last thing we're gonna need in order to make this work is something called a power cell card. And we'll need one card for every power cell that we have. So I'm just gonna make two since that's all the dimensional cells that we have right now. And let's head down to our workshop and power area so we can set this up and see how it works. Okay, I'm down here. The power that's being produced from our trees ends up here in an ultimate energy cube. So we have about 102 million RF available to us. But what I wanna do is make that energy available anywhere in the base that I choose to set down another power cell. So the way we do that, I'll show you the simple setup first and then we'll infuse them and make them better. So I take a dimensional cell and I put it next to my energy source. And then if I right click and get the interface, I can set all of the sides for this dimensional cell to accept energy. So you'll see that it fills up with energy. Now we want the ability to link this cell to the one that we're gonna set down in another part of the base. So first I want to put a link card in this power cell and give it an ID. So I'm just gonna right click on the power cell and you'll notice I get the text message installed module. And now we have a power cell card and it is linked to number 13. And that is a unique identifier for the network that this power cell is connected to. The reason it says 13 is I've been testing this out first before I filmed it. So we did a few tests before we got to this network ID. Don't worry about it. Yours will probably say one if you've never installed one before. So now that we have this power cell with a link card assigned number 13, if I stick another power cell in here, it will automatically link to this network. So now we have a power cell card that is linked to this one. All right, so I have a 13 in there and a 13 in my hand. So when I go set this power cell down, which we're actually going to do in a new area, If we go up here, I have made elevators. So right below our base, this is just a cleared out portion of the ravine wall. And there's our mob farm across the way. I made a little bridge so we can get back and forth. There's our immersive engineering. This is going to be a new area, sneak peek. We have to wait till the next episode to see what it is. But I thought it'd be a great place to test out the ability for us to put power anywhere in the base. So right now, this is a dimensional cell, no power, nothing, does me no good. I can't use it in this state. So now I'm gonna take my power cell, right click it, and you'll see suddenly I have power because it is linked to the other dimensional cell that I have set up. You'll also notice, if you didn't before, each of the dimensional cells that we created had a maximum of 1 million RF together, because this is now technically a multi-block, I have 2 million RF available in this dimensional cell. 
So if I have a machine I want to hook up to this, like my sawmill, I can just set it down next to the dimensional cell and it's automatically powered. So I've selected the set all sides to send energy instead of input. Remember the other one we set it to input so that it could get power from our power generation system. The other important piece of information is to see the cost is 2.4% of the total power in order to set this up. As we consume the energy, we'll basically have a tax on that energy for using this dimensional cell that amounts to 2.4% of the total energy, which is really not bad. But with the RF tools infuser, we can make this better. So I'm gonna take my power cell back over to the workshop area. And I'm gonna set up the machine infuser block from RF tools. And in fact, just to give it power, I'm gonna set it in front of our energy source. So what this block does is it makes use of dimensional shards and it infuses whatever block we put in here with those shards. So we'll get, it looks like it's costing a handful of shards for each percentage of infusion. So that was not quite a stack of shards, gave me 23% infusion. You can see that our input slash output has changed. Now, instead of producing 5,000 RF a tick, we produce 5,500 RF a tick. I think I have enough dimensional shards to infuse both of our dimensional cells to their maximum 100%. So let me go do that and we'll see what our total power output potential is. 99, 100% infused. So now when we take a look, so our total output potential is 7,500 RF per tick, which is fantastic. You should also note that you can make upgraded versions of the dimensional cells. So we could potentially make, turn this dimensional cell into an advanced cell. Oh, we could have made a simple one. Ha, ah, who knew? Okay, for future reference, we could have made a simple dimensional cell without going to an ocean monument because this recipe only requires nether quartz. Note to self, check all the recipes in JEI before you hair off on an adventure to try to craft something. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm also going to infuse the other dimensional cell that we have. For the curious, I found most of the dimensional shards that we have mined in the nether when I was mining for netherite. 96, 97, 98, 99, 100% infused. So this dimensional cell was sitting right here. It also now will output 7,500 RF per tick. That is excellent. So I think we'll take our machine infuser over to the other side because we now have the ability to put power wherever we want it in the base for a very reasonable cost. So I can stick the machine infuser right next to this and it's powered. That is so awesome. Note to self, when you after you infuse a machine, you'll have to reset the sides. So we needed to reset our original dimensional cell so that it could accept power. Yeah, 2 million RF a tick. Oh, here we go. So side output, our cost has been reduced from 2.4 to 1.2%. Oh, that's great. Okay, so there is still a small cost for consuming the power across the dimensional cells, but our power production is sufficient enough that that's not going to be an issue right now. Between our grand adventures to the Ocean Monument and our finally having the ability to put power anywhere in our base, I think that's everything we have time for today. Thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed the episode, please leave a like. It helps me out and I appreciate it. If you'd like to keep up with what's going on on the channel, don't hesitate to subscribe. And remember, as always, you are the shiny stuff that awesome is made of. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye.